Hi, welcome to another Mac 7 tutorial. This is number 47, video looper improver. Yeah. And one might be tempted to wonder, how could it be with such a fine video looper that we had here? And I uh, repeat, here it is. Look, you can just set your... your thingamajigs everywhere, it's so good, everything working, you have to love it, and yet, somehow, we're unsatisfied, because, well, we can't control the rate, we don't have enough gadgets, there's always more to do. So, let me just have a little sip of coffee. <sighs> My god, that's good coffee. And uh, let's dive right in there and make ourselves an even better video looper. So, what about this rate thing? You may have felt a certain amount of, um, what do you call it when you see things in the future? When I put rate in here, because I was thinking to myself, we have got to be able to deal with uh, rate. But as it turns out, of course, I'll never need the rate out of here, but I was thinking about it, and I thought, oh, I'm going to need that rate. Well, so I'm not trying to waste your time here, but I am thinking about rate. So let's get um, a slider for speed. So I'm just going to copy one of these sliders and sort of turn it vertically, because I'm imagining this sort of... Um, very elegant user interface from Tomorrowland. And um, the one thing that we will have to do, however, is um, the rate doesn't change from movie to movie. So what we're going to do is go into the inspector. So we'll highlight this and push Command I or push the little white button there. And what we want to do is make the range of this, oh, Oh golly, what would we make the range of this? So, um, full speed ahead it would end up being 1, but if you wanted to have negative, let's say we make the range 4. And then if full speed ahead is 1, you have to actually stop and think about this, that ends up being 3 someday, someday on this. But the output minimum here needs to be negative 2. Negative 2. So, so now it can go from negative 2 to positive 2, because the range is 4. So that'll give us double speed going in both directions, and we are going to float the output because we don't want it to jump around too much. Okay, remember to check that box. Whenever you see things moving in a sort of stepped fashion, you probably don't have a float going on, you have an energy. Okay, back over here. I'm going to close the inspector because it's just taken up my precious visual space. So, um, the one thing, though, that's often annoying is when you just want to go normal speed, um, you want this to go to normal, which will be 1.0. So this is what I was starting to argue with myself about before. Let's type a message here and type normal. Normal. Now, we're not going to send it the message normal. What we're going to do is send another message that's called 3.0, right? But we're going to use normal to bang on 3.0 so that 3.0 goes in the top of the slider and out the bottom will come uh, let's put a float down there and see what shows up. And then, oh, my precious space, my precious space. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Sorry, it's going to get smaller. Um, woo, 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 woo. Okay. So, whatever comes out the bottom then, there we go. So, if we put a 3 in the top, we hit normal, bangs 3, boom. And what comes out the bottom is 1. This is the preponderance of the slider. Sliders, when you set their minimum at less than zero, um, you have to add that same number back in when you put it in the top, or it, 
it, it, it's, it's like it still thinks when you tell it from the top what number to go to, it goes to the third of its number of positions, three out of its range of four. But what it really is is positive one. So you always have to make that weird calculation. Okay, very good. Enough talking about that technical stuff. Now, to send this to the JIT movie so JIT movie knows what it is, we need to also prepend it with a word. Now, I could make a prepend object, and that would be the normal thing to do, but I always like to teach you to do things 10 different ways, and so here we go again. I'm going to type a message, and the message is going to be rate, and then string 1. And when I say string 1, that's not an, a capital S, that's a dollar sign 1. This does exactly the same thing as prepend rate. So why don't I use prepend rate? Because sometimes this is what you want. And um, there's reasons for both of them, uh, very subtle things, but I just wanted to show you two different ways to do the exact same thing. So now, when that message comes out 1, it's actually going to say rate 1.0, and then that is going to go flying around here, right on up to JitMovie. And so now, um, when we play our movie, oops, lock my patcher, read the movie, it erased all these things, but let's... Oh, I love it. That is fantastic. So there it is going at a little less than half speed. Now this is sort of funny because right now it's going forward, but you can make it go backwards. But it was already palindroming anyway, so going backwards and palindroming is kind of a crazy waste of time, isn't it? But we can do it, because that's the kind of stuff you can do when you've got full control. Okay, so stop for a minute. So we've got rate, we've got volume, we've got in point, we've got out point, and we've got one movie that this thing can play. Let's fix that up too. Um, we often use the U menu as we did over here, and uh, let's just uh, steal it for a minute um, and move it over a little bit. There's some other things that you can do with a U menu that will really help sometimes make life easier. And that is, you can tell it to go to a certain um, file instead of telling it exactly what to put in there. You want to get everything that's available. So what am I talking about? Where the movies are, let's go find out where the movies are. Here we go. Zoom over here on this side. Click on the video. Video thing pops out. And we'll scroll down to, uh, I just saw Bladen, for example. Uh, or b-ball, okay? So I click on b-ball and I see it. Oops. I click on b-ball and I see down there, I can't point at it, where the mouse goes, oh, there we go. Down here you see that it's located at c74 colon forward slash media forward slash jitter. Okay, so if we want this human to go to that place, we can either send it a message, which is, I guess we could do it that way. We can send it a message. Here's our message. It is prefix, and then we type the same thing over again. C74 colon forward slash media forward slash jitter, okay, and hook it right to the top there, 
And now let's lock our pattern to see what it does. Boink. I, I just clicked on this. And what do we get? We get exactly the same thing that we had before. Something's gone wrong again. No, nothing's actually gone wrong. We have to enable it to go and find that. So we're going to hi highlight that again and then come down here and say, oh, it's because this one's also stuck on another um, uh, prefix and folder uh, thing. We could actually go here too and say, uh, oh, I don't know where C74 is. Hmm. Is it? Oh, where are those applications? The problem with doing it this way, you know what, this never works with C74 stuff because it's included inside the, um, inside of the, of the application itself. And since you can't navigate to that, you end up in a big, big trouble. So we're going to let it auto populate. We're going to click on that there. And then let's go over here, see what it does. Now, it's auto-populated, because that's what it needs to be able to do it this way. And it has the B-Ball movie, the Blading movie, the Blossom EXR. What the heck is that? I can't play that. Somehow there's too many things in here. No crash test movies in there. Let's go back and discover something else. So we go back over here, and near auto-populate, collection, types, ooh, file types, we can edit the file types. And here's, we're just going to type in capital M, small o, small o, move, and then a capital D. I know, it's insane. In the documentation of Max, it will tell you that movie files are called move, the files, that's how it recognizes it. It, it. it gets all the different types of movie files. Let's not worry about how I know this and just accept that I do and you could, but uh, we don't have enough time for that kind of craziness. But you type in capital M, small o, small o, capital B here. And now we'll go over here again and click on our prefix. And look at that. We have a whole bunch of movies here for our enjoyment for playing. And uh, I'm just going to click on one here. And of course, we don't want to prepend it loop. We want to prepend it read. So we'll just get rid of that loop, put in READ. Now, one more thing we have to do, and I'm just going to point this out here. Look, see where this cord is attached? What comes out this outlet, as we used in palindrome, is a number. And that's great if you're telling something that has a number, like loop points, um, what number in a list to go to. But we're not doing that. We're telling it to go read a movie file. So we have to take this patch cord and move it over to the middle. And when you, if you hover over this, it says, um, item text evaluated as a message. Text, that's what you need evaluated as a message. Prepend read, we'll go over to the JIT movie. We're going to move everything over there, so I'm not going to bother with the cord yet. Um, I think we can dispense with a read crash test movie, so I'll just delete it. And let's move this. And I'm holding the shift key down now this and this. Well, let's not move them all together. Let's move these two together over here. And then we'll put the p pen right here. We still need something to tell it to get duration every time we open here. And so we can do that. Now, we have got, if you lock your patcher, something that's really 
going to be working for us. So here we'll go to uh, the Dishes movie. Oh, the Dishes doesn't have a soundtrack. The heck with that. How about the O movie? Oh, nice and slow. Look, we can hit normal. It doesn't feel normal, but I'm assured by leading experts that it is normal. So, um, since it's a new movie, Hmm. I don't think it knows its direction. Or maybe I didn't hit it. <laughs> Alright, let's just stop that right now. So, now we have rate, we have in, we have out, we have palindrome and not, we have a selection of movies, it just tells us there is definitely one more object that we need, and that, as I'm sure many of you have already guessed, is, I'm unlocking my patcher, preset. Presets are really awesome because if, when, when somebody approaches a, one of your works and doesn't quite know um, what the possibilities are. This is one way to show them what the possibilities are. So um, let's let's uh, we go from here, and we want to connect to everything that has a setting. Okay, so we're going to go from here, and the great thing is you can just hold the shift key down now. I'm going to go to the top of this U menu. Click. And look, I've got another chord ready. I'm going to go to the top of this um, slider. I'm going to go to the top of this slider. I'm going to go to the top of this slider. I'm going to go over here to Palindrome View Menu. And is there anything else that uh, I don't think we want to do volume? Uh, whoa, it's like pendulum. Now I have this silly cord that I can't get rid of, no matter how I click. What am I going to do? I mean, what the heck is way over there? Um, I want to tell you what you do when you have a cord like this. This is when you're doing segmented patch cords or you've connected to one too many things. You push down the command key and click, and it disappears. So now when you... Um, let us say, load the basketball movie, and then load your, that's, a, that's kind of nice, right? Or let's, let's just make it go real fast. Okay, so there's our basketball movie, and now we shift click on that. And then we do another movie, waiting. Um, we say, it's got to be there. And you don't want it to palindrome. You always want it to go the same way. Normal. Not normal. Uh, loop. That's distracting. And really slow. Oh, I have it going backwards. So normal looping going backwards. I like that. Okay, we'll save that as number two. Shift and click on number two. And then we'll get another movie. Uh, our beloved crash test. And we'll play. I like the piano right there. I'm going to build myself a, a loop or sampler just to make a groovy music with. So let's say I, I, I like this just the way it is. Now I'm going to push uh, shift and number three. So now if I go to my presets, I've got one. Uh-oh. 
our loop points are loading are not affecting the the movie. The movie's loading before the loop points. Tricky. Well, let's see if we can solve that by hook or by crook. Um, I think I know how to do it. We have two possibilities. We can put a delay. No, we can't put a delay. We could put a uh, hmm. Uh, pipe and see if we can um, get those levels to come out slower from the bottom of the sliders. That's the only way I can think of doing it. So here we go. Let's let's give it a, a shot here. Uh, unlock your patcher. Uh, not delay. Uh, pipe. And a delay of, let's say, 50 milliseconds. Give the, give the poor thing time to load. Okay, so we're going to take this. Well, first we're going to duplicate that and bring it down here. And take this over here. Whoops. And take this one. If you highlight it, you can grab that green thing. That's what I was actually trying to do last time. And drag the thing down here. And if it looks silly, you can turn it upside down there. So now we've got pipe coming out of there. And we want the same thing to happen over here. We're going to highlight that cord and attach it to the bottom of pipe and then reattach our slider whoop, to the top of pipe. And let's see if that solves our little problem. Let's uh, lock the patcher and hit preset 2. Yep, look at that. I think that um, what is also happening here is that the get duration is happening before the movie's loading. So we're going to take one of our pipes here and pop and come off the patcher. And um, we're going to be a little bit crushed for space here, but we love that. Um, let me just up a little bit. And then option click on your pipe. So you've got a pipe 50 over there. And there you go. There you go. And we're going to change it to pipe um, 30 because. It needs to, okay, stop and think about this for a minute. When the movie loads, it'll, it'll send that down here. This will get stuck here for 30 milliseconds. The movie loads, then this says get duration. But at least it gets done doing that before it loads the loop points into, the, into, these, um, into these sliders. And why is that important? Because the sliders change size according to the movie. So let's see if we fixed everything. Is everyone 100% lost on this now? Let's see. That's the way it was. It's so weird how it's just frozen. And let's see about number one. Yeah, I remember that. And number three. This is what the giveaway was. 
these these were the first time we did it. These were way back here, and I knew I had them set them there. So it looks like everything's working now. So we have one very very final thing to do, and that is to make this into the most beautiful interface ever made. And here's how we do it: we go around, we unlock the capture, we highlight everything we want to be in the. Uh, in the presentation, so I'm going to say this U menu, definitely. I'm holding the shift key down. The presets, definitely. Loop, oh yeah, you know I want that. Loop points, I eh, don't really need the loop points. Uh, that's for somebody else. Definitely this slider, definitely that. Definitely the other slider, and definitely this slider. And I think I want the live game. I want this. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Easy DAC here, so I can turn on the sound. And I want this, so I can turn on, on and off the metro. I want to be able to stop the silly thing, which reminds me of something else, um, which is I'd like to be able to start it now and then, but picky, picky, picky. Uh, can you have everything all at once? So we're going to go over here now and say include in presentation. I'm going to click that box, and they will all be included in the presentation. But now we have to do one more thing here. Click so that they're all not included. Drag this slider out of the way, and click on the, the JIT P window, which was underneath the slider. We didn't get that. So have that included in the presentation, too. Now, let's see if we got everything. Um, you can go down here to the bottom and click on this thing that looks like an easel. And that'll put you in presentation mode, if you're lucky. I, I like the fact that mine is not doing it. That's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Oh, you have to click inside the puncher. Not twice, though, because that'll make you a new object. And then lock the puncher, and now put it in presentation mode. Uh, Oh, 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 I'm recording this, my screen recording, and the screen recorder is getting in the way. Here, I'll do it another way. I'll just say, presentation mode. There we go. So now we have all this stuff that was in presentation mode, and you can still unlock the patcher. So I'm going to unlock my patcher now, and I'm going to type a new object and say panel. And I'm going to set a panel up here, right where it should be. To be pretty and drag it out here to about the right size for my for my uh, user interface. Now I'm going to format it so that it's colorful. Uh, what are, what's our color scheme today? Uh, uh, green and uh, purple and uh, green and gold. There we go. Uh, that's kind of ugly. That's even ugly. What's going on here? I thought it had pretty colors. Those are nice gold. Come on. I am not buying it. Well, I guess I'll buy it today. I'll tell you what, we'll make this one green. And we'll make the other one gold. Oh, that works so much better. Okay. I'm, I'm satisfied with that. I don't want to waste your time. Okay, so let's click on this, go up here to Arrange, and say, Send to the back. And now we can take all of these things. This is the nice thing about being unlocked in presentation mode. We could say this is for the Metro. This is the start. You know, you can, you can actually make new objects, too. You can type C, uh, start. Right, and uh, look outside that, move it around, and see how all this pans out here. There's a little volume running down the side. I think I'm just a natural at this, people. And then we got this all nice and lined up with that starter thing of the jiggy. We put the, the big uh, the big slider here. Um, 
I'm going to move all these together with my dragging and selecting here. Looks like we're about out of space. I'm going to move these down. Move that one down. And let's make this a little bigger. To accommodate all this stuff that we've got here. Uh, we've got Crash Test Movie right up there. We've got it looping. And we've got the stop button. And I guess. Oh, I know what we can do. We'll like this. Just resize it to go the other direction. Here's our presets. Whoops, whoops, stop doing the presets. Don't do this. There we go. You know, you can also just leave it there and then use the little arrows on your keyboard sometimes. It's more accurate. And that is how we make what may be the coolest patch around it. And then I lock it. Hmm. I'm put it uh, you know, just control L. So that's it, man. Um, and just. Oh, well, there's no sound with this one, I forgot. You gotta get it, gotta get some sound. That's the way to go out. All right, people. You have now made one amazing video looper. So go to it, patch well. Thank you for watching this video and all the others. And I will see you next time. Take it easy.